If you've been hearing a lot about rare earth elements, but don't know why they are such a big deal, don't worry, this video's got you covered. These minerals are quietly powering not just iPhones and cars, but advanced missiles, satellites, and everything in between. And China? China's basically the OPEC of rare earth elements, with a near monopoly on their trade. So let's break it down. What are rare earths? Why is China dominating their trade? And what does that mean for the rest of the world? Rare earth elements are a group of 17 chemically similar metals. These metals are essential for things like making permanent magnets found in EVs and wind turbines, phosphors that are used in screens and LED lights, and alloys that are used in military tech and aerospace. Even though these earth elements are called rare, these minerals are actually pretty common in the earth's crust. The tricky part is that they're rarely found in concentrated, economically extractable forms. Extracting and refining them is messy, expensive, and environmentally hazardous. This difficulty in refining them into something that's actually usable is why they're actually called rare. So how did China become the number one producer for these minerals? Well, if you go back to the 1980s, the U.S. was actually the leader in rare earth production, with facilities like the Mountain Pass Mine in California supplying the world. But around this time, China started to enter the equation. By the 1990s, China had figured out two things. The first was that the country had huge rare earth reserves. And the second was that it could mine and refine them much cheaper than the competition, thanks to their lower labor costs, lax environmental rules, and through aggressive state support. China began to invest heavily not just in the mining of these rare earth elements, but also the rest of the supply chain, including their processing, refining, and manufacturing capabilities. The result was that by the 2010s, China was producing over 80% of the world's rare earths, and refining even more. It became the go-to source for these minerals, and the rest of the world happily outsourced their supply chains and the dirty work. But outsourcing something this important had its consequences. In 2010, a maritime dispute between China and Japan led to China cutting off rare earth exports to Japan. Prices spiked and the world got a wake-up call. Suddenly, countries realized just how vulnerable global supply chains were. Rare earths weren't just for making gadgets, they were a geopolitical tool. And that's still the case. As US and Chinese tensions have heated up over tariffs and trade, China is revisiting the same playbook and restricting rare earth exports again as leverage in negotiations. Since April of 2025, China's Commerce Ministry has required export licenses for medium and heavy rare earth magnets, covering about seven key elements, along with strict end-user certificates. Essentially, you now need approval to ship these rare earth elements abroad. These controls majorly restrict exports used in defense, semiconductors, electric vehicles, and other high-tech sectors, and have been rippling through the economy. Ford had to actually pause production at one of its plants due to rare earth supply shortages. With the export restrictions the US has placed on advanced semiconductors to China, China has tied easing rare earth exports to the US with the rollback of these advanced chip export curbs, making rare earths a bargaining chip in broader tech and trade diplomacy. Trade talks that took place in London on June 11th produced a limited framework. China agreed to temporarily resume exports, granting a six-month license to some US auto suppliers, but general military-grade export curbs remain intact. So can the rest of the world challenge China's rare earth supremacy and break their monopoly? While there's a chance, it definitely won't be easy or fast. The US, EU, Australia, and Canada are all investing in rare earth mining and processing, trying to diversify their supply chains. The Mountain Pass mine in California is back in business, and Australia's Linus is the biggest non-China producer out there. But the catch is that mining rare earths is just step one. The real bottleneck in the process is actually in the refining, and China still controls over 85% of global rare earth processing capacity. 
Building those refining capabilities takes years, not months, and the rest of the world has a lot of catch-up to do. As demand for advanced tech explodes, rare earths will only become more and more important. And there's more political pressure than ever to reduce reliance on China. But for now, the world is in an awkward position, reliant on minerals that mostly come from one place. And unless other countries make serious investments and changes, China's rare earth dominance isn't going anywhere anytime soon. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to also check out my full documentary on the economic problems facing China, linked here. And make sure to subscribe to the channel for more finance and business content. Thanks.